She sold seashells on the seashore. She did a lot of that and a whole lot more. Mary, 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 Mary. Um, hello. Um, so what I want to do today is to take you through the process of uh, writing a tune, basically, and a little bit on the making of the video, but mostly on the, the writing of the tune uh, of something uh, like the Mary Anning song um, that I've done, and, and give you a bit of an insight into how it works for me. I think what's important when exploring and talking about the creative side of things is that each person will have a, a, a slightly different way of doing it. And, and that's totally okay. And, and that's part of the fun of working with other people. So for example, sometimes you have somebody who's the person that's very much sitting on the keyboard and doing the thing and you have another person when they're writing together that's in the room and they go yeah that bit that bit there you just did that bit you know that na, 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 na. that bit you did just send I like that we'll keep that and we'll add that to that bit that you did before so they kind of help to make order of the chaos because ultimately that's what songwriting is I think it is for me. It's about taking notes that are jumbled all over the place, notes that are randomly floating around in the air and putting them on a piece of paper and then turning them into something that you can sing and dance to and then turning that into a video clip and then doing a show and stuff. So, um, so how, 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 where to start? Um, well, where to start is a good point. How do you start writing a song? Um, how do you start creating something? And whether it's about dinosaurs or um, whether it's a song about love, um, how you start again, it can, it can vary. What I often like to do when I'm writing about a particular topic or I'm writing a particular show about a particular theme is that I'll do a lot of reading and I'll watch lots of videos. And so with Mary Anning, for example, um, with Mary Anning, I knew about the story. I'd wanted to write a song about Mary for, for a while. So the idea had been bubbling around in my head and then when I was chatting with the folk from uh, uh, emailing backwards and forwards with the team from Mary Anning Rocks about support that we could give to them for their campaign to build a statue, a well overdue statue for Mary, I thought to myself, well, um, I really should have a song. I really should get on with writing that song about Mary. Now, that's not always the case. Sometimes the song just comes, you're walking down the street, oh, I've got an idea, ah, and you start writing it. But Mary Anning was, was always a song I was going to write. It was just a question of what it looked like when I got round to it. So once I made the decision to actually get off my bum and write it, um, it didn't take that long. The idea for writing a song had been around for a few years. Um, so, but, but what I often do, right, what I often do and the writing of a tune is that I'll, I'll get a book, right? I get a book and all the shows, like if I'm writing a whole show, that show might have a book of its own songs. Um, because I like to add a little mystery to that book and that book, whatever it is, whether it's this or a fancy journal made of leather or whatever it is, this book then becomes quite special. This book becomes quite special because the first words of that song are written into this book. That makes it something unlike any other book, any other page, any other piece of paper that's ever been written ever. And that's the case whether it's me doing it or whether it's you doing it. So I like to do that. And I was looking back 
when I thought I'd do this session for you, I was looking back at some other things and there's a, there's a thing, I did a song about Dinosuchus um, a couple of years ago for the Dinosaurs Amongst Us album. And I'm looking here at, oh, these are the original notes for it. And it's kind of just got this, you know, uh, the songs, the lean, mean, seldom seen, dino munching submarine. And I'm going through it like lean, mean, munching machine, keen, seen, protein, routine, seldom seen and stuff and playing around with all those, those kinds of words. And eventually it kind of got itself together. Um, so with, with Mary Anning, I, I just sat down one day and sometimes it's like, right, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to the office. I'm coming here into this place to write the thing. And I got my piece of paper, uh, my book, which I decided this would be the Mary Anning book. And um, so I started doing it. And um, so this is, this is, these, these are the first words here. Um, and it's got Mary Anning, Princess of Paleo. Now, that's a word, a phrase, Princess of Paleontology, that's often used for her. But as I was writing and playing around with ideas, I thought, I don't like, I don't like calling her a princess because I think she's more than that because a princess is a person who is born into a position of privilege and they don't need qualifications whereas Mary Anning was somebody who had the skills and the knowledge but hadn't been born into that position of privilege and that's one of the great things about her story so I, I started scribbling around with some things and and sometimes like I've got <laughs> I've got an iPad here, right? And sometimes I'll have an idea. Let's have a look. And oh look, let's play this. Have a listen. So I'll just have that idea as I'm playing around with words and I don't know what the words that are going to be that are attached to it and here's another bit for, for Mary Anning and it's in the iPad and it's just like no 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 you do it into the thing let, 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 have a listen to this no not that that came later this bit no this bit So da 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 um, Now if you know the song, and we'll play it at the end of this, if you know the song, that's kind of, and that just came in, a, in an instant, as often happens with these things. So um, I recorded that because I liked that. And I didn't know if I'd use it for this or it might be used for something else. But anyway, so here um, I started writing some words. That's my handwriting. It's not very good. Um, and it's like... Many, many adding, such a hero, whoa, 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 finder of fossils, mother of paleo, whoa, 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 no matter what they said, they all said no, many carry on, whoa, 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 so that was some of the earliest, and, and you know, when you write it, you, you know it's like, yeah, that worked. No, it's not quite there. And sometimes it comes in an instant and you go, that's it. I'm going to keep that exactly as it is. And other times you have to, to play with it. Um, the, the bridge of the song where it goes, she sold seashells by the seashore. That was pretty easy. But even then the words weren't exactly the same. So this is the, the original words are, she sold seashells on the seashore. She did a bit of that and a whole lot more. Um, so I've just tweaked it to, she sold seashells by the seashore. She did a lot of that and a whole lot more. But the chords were, she sold seashells on the seashore. She did a lot of that and a whole lot more. Which isn't quite melodically how it ended up, but that's totally fine. And here, oh my goodness, look at my writing. So what is it? Mary Anning, parent to paleo, crossed out. Mary Anning, she's my hero. Mary Anning, mother of paleo. Um, survived a lightning strike, kept doing her thing when so many said no, kept on going. So there are things and words. Um, faced a world that denied her, so kept on doing stuff, no matter. So, 
and then you turn the page and you tweak things and you write it and you scribble it and you scribble it and Jurassic waves that once told her prehistoric coast thing. So, so I'll do that and then I'll sit at the keyboard and I'll play, play with the chords of what it might look like. So the chords of the verse here I've got So the chords, they're pretty straightforward chords because you don't need to be complex and I like to play complex sometimes but this was pretty straightforward um, and so you record that and I played that into the iPad and listened to it um, but then the next step I often do with the tune I'll then get my laptop out and I'll start so this will give me a particular edit then I'll get onto my laptop and I'll start typing it into the laptop and as I'm typing it into the laptop I'm then changing what I've written there as I'm typing it in. So that's an opportunity in a different way, in a different headspace to edit it and play with it. Um, and then what you do, you print it out, of course, and you print it out. And when you have printed it out, that's another opportunity. Um, this is from a show we did a few years ago. Uh, it's another opportunity to go through and change the words. There's a verse here for a trilobite song that I do where we've completely gotten rid of an entire verse. This word verse was, what did they look like when they were alive is something we'd all like to know. And that is a part of the work that we do when exploring long, long ago. A little like horseshoe crabs, it seems to me, or crayfish perhaps I might say. Yes, one of the important things that we do is compare the past with today. And like, that's nice, but it just didn't. I just thought, yeah, I don't want that verse in the song. So I got rid of it. And you're the only people that are watching this that have ever heard that. Everybody else, nobody gets to hear that. Um, so, let's go through the process. So we do the research, we have a think, we sit down and we start. And do you know what you start with? You start with that, a blank page. Every author, every writer, every creative person starts with a blank page. And that's where the adventure begins more than anything. And you start playing with words and ideas and you, you, you know, you might use an iPad, you might use a keyboard. Um, I sometimes, this guitar I've had, oh, bit out of tune, this guitar I've had for a long time and I've written lots and lots of songs on this guitar. And so in the same way, the, remember how I said how when you write something on a book in a page that those pages that book becomes something special because that's where those page uh, first have life when you write a song on an instrument that instrument is part of the song so whether it's this keyboard or this or there's a whole other bunch of instruments I use but I've probably written more tunes with this keyboard and this guitar than all of the other tunes that I've written combined for all kinds of things. But those instruments then become special. And there's no amount of money that makes sense when thinking about some of the songs that I've written on here and what they mean to me. And not just, you know, sciencey songs, but other songs. Love songs! I know, all that ah, stuff. Um, so, we have the words on the page, we type them into the computer, we print them out, we work them, then we go back and we retype them into the computer and we print them out again. And then we play and we play and we play. The next part of the process once you've played around and you've got the chords and you're like, yep, yeah, that melody, you need to think about what, what kind of arrangement you want for the song. Is it, is it a folk song? Is it a, um, is it a rock song? Is it a nice string quartet? Is it uh, something like you imagine somebody playing a lute uh, from the uh, mid 15 or 1600s? What is it? What, how, do you, how are you hearing it? And sometimes be guided by how, as you're recording it, how you're hearing it. With Mary Anning's song, 
it was pretty easy because to me it needed to be a rock song. It needed to have that um, that strength to it um, to reflect her personality, to reflect fossils as rocks and Mary Anning as a rock star. But the next part of the process after you've written the tune is to sit in front of your computer in the studio um, and record the instruments and arrange it. So let's have a look at that. So once it was decided that the Mary Anning song was going to be like a rock and roll song, it was then a question of playing around with the instrumentation. Um, what does a rock band have? What kind of, what's the best rock band? I like, I mean, uh, for we old people, the Rolling Stones, I wanted that kind of, kind of feel for it. Um, and so um, I, I, I learned to play the drums many years ago. So often the first thing I'll do is start with the drum track. And um, so this is uh, on the drums, which are over there, but I'll just play you. This is what the, the drum track um, began as. Where are you? Drum track. Oh yeah, there. And that kind of gives you the feel. Mary Annie, Mary Anning, rock kind of thing um, and then uh, I've got some friends that are musicians and we play around with ideas and what kind of bass do you want because you've got to have a bass and it's got to be kind of so it's a pretty cool bass line um, and then you want some more bits. Uh, here we are, another guitar. Oh, the first guitar. I haven't played the guitar before, so, so we've got the drums, the bass, and then a guitar. But good rock and roll has two guitars, so here's the second guitar. So those, those were the four tracks. I did, for a while, play with the piano track, and we've kept that in for a later version, for the video clip version, where there's a piano that turns up um, after the She Sells Seashells by the Seashore bit. Um, just this kind of honky-tonk piano. And that was kind of the style. It's, it's like it's, this kind of honky-tonk kind of piano and guitar and stuff. But so this is what it sounds like when you start off with just, so let's just start off with the bass. Sorry, with the drums. Start with the drums. Where are you, drums? Sometimes things don't go according to plan. Be quiet, guitar. But we'll just keep rolling the camera. This is why it's good. You get to see these things happening in real time. And this is the cool thing, you know. Creativity is, uh, is, is, is all about making sense of chaos. And I cannot stress that enough. Writing and creativity is about making sense of chaos. It's about looking at the stars in the sky and seeing the billions of them and finding the pattern in the stars in the sky. It's about looking at the notes jumbling around, as I mentioned earlier, and picking the ones. It's about looking at all the letters that are formed into combinations of words and making sense of that. So, drums and bass. Together, thank you very much. So we'll try this. We'll start with this, that, and then we'll add the bass. But we'll add one of the guitars. And we'll add the second guitar. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
so that's that. And then you've got to sing it. Aye, you've got to sing it all. So let's go. And what we did, so I, um, here's me singing solo and it, sometimes it takes one take, sometimes it takes a few takes, but I'd rather the rawness of that single take. Sometimes some people when they record, they'll record a verse and then they'll record the next verse and then it's like, no, have a go at recording the whole thing all at once because it keeps it real. Um, a strike, a journey to discover what the ancient world was like, what dwelt beneath prehistoric coasts. What... Um, so that's me. And then we needed to add the other voices and the other harmonies. And when I first did the song, it was just me and me doing lots of different voices. But for the single version and the video clip, we wanted it not to just be me. We wanted... Um, we wanted Mary Anning singing on it. So Gemma, who plays Mary Anning, Anning in the video clip, can also sing a bit. And so we, we, we got her to come in and, um, oh, and there's also, hang on. Jurassic Ghosts, oh. She, um, she played a dragon in a show and we used the dragon's voice in it as well. Buddy the Dragon, so this is... Jurassic Ghost! Can I add the voices? Oh, oh. So this is uh, me with lead and with Gemma and Buddy. Jurassic Ghosts! Oh, oh. Oh. Um, and then we add... There's me and me and me, and me, let's add all of those. Jurassic Ghosts, oh, 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 oh. A hero born in a different time, across the rocks she would crawl and climb. She lit a fuse that now burns as a flame. Listen to her story, remember her name. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Mary Annie dug deep to explore. Oh, 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 oh. Lived in a world that denied her soul. Kept on doing her thing no matter who told her no. Mary Annie in her hearts forevermore. Oh, 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 oh. Maybe the bass as well. She found plesiosaurs, a few pterosaurs, fossil fish, coprolites, and ichthyosaurs. In the place where she lived by an ancient sea, she sold seashells by the seashore to support her family. Oh. Oh. So you can see from the beginning, from that blank piece of paper, with some few scribblings on it, those few ramblings on my iPad that you then build and you build and you build it. At any point you can change it because it's yours. At any point you can go, actually, um, I didn't like that bit. I'm going to move that. I'm going to do something different there. So, um, and then of course, the next thing after that was making the video clip. Um, and, uh, I'll talk about that another time because that in itself was a fabulous adventure. Cheerio! <laughs>